Hi, it's Carl Thompson here from StorageCraft. In this quick demo, I'm going to run through some of the disaster recovery technology in our Shadow Protect solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump into a Hyper-V virtual machine. And I'm going to show you or explain how some of our backup technology works. We're then going to look at recovering this VM uh, and on-prem and in the cloud. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump into the shared folder on my network and copy a bunch of data onto the desktop. Now I'm using this demonstration to explain perhaps a busy production server. So I'm actually copying just over 8,500 files onto the desktop and traditional backup technology will really struggle. It will interrogate the file system, find these files and one by one back them up. What Shadow Protect's doing is it's tracking sectors in real time. So it's continuously aware of the sectors changing on disk, which means when it goes to do a backup, it knows what's changed and it can be very quick. So Shadow Protect can actually be configured to back up as frequent as every 15 minutes throughout the day. Because it's sector-based backups that are tracked in real time, there's no impact or disruption to users, um, giving us very effective recovery point objectives. So this backup's nearly finished. What we'll do is I'll rename this folder on the, uh, this file on the desktop, let's call this uh, SPX, and I'll put in the time there, 2.31. PM. So this is our current time I'm doing the demonstration. So what I'm going to do is open up the Shadow Protect console. Now we don't have to deploy the Shadow Protect console out to our physical and virtual environment, but in this scenario, I'm just opening up the console to show you what exactly is going to happen here. Now in here I've got a continuous incremental backup job. The last backup happened about a quarter of an hour ago. Uh, this job is a policy, so that's been deployed from our central monitoring and management console called Shadow Control. So I'm just going to jump into Shadow Control here locate this particular server and ask it to do a backup right now. So just click Run Job. If we just minimize that, we can see there the job's gone green. Shadow Protect's doing a quick check that all the backup images are all still there and everything's okay. It's then going to perform a snapshot. So this is an in-guest snapshot. It's using the StorageCraft VSS provider to talk directly to your Exchange, SQL, SharePoint, Active Directory, any VSS-aware writer to get a consistent, stable state backup of my whole system. It's now writing that 8,500 files worth of data into a backup image. We can see that whole job there took just 25 seconds. So that in fact was far quicker than it even took me to copy the files on my desktop in the first place. And most of that time was revolved around the snapshotting rather than actually copying the data. So we're getting extremely fast backups as frequent as every 15 minutes throughout the day, zero disruption to users, making this a very effective backup solution. Now obviously I can mount these backups and do file and folder recovery very easily, but let's say in the evening I jump on the server or right now and I need to make a quick change to my server, I run some software updates or perhaps I click on a bad crypto link and all of a sudden my server crashes. Blue screen crypto, something's gone wrong, my server's dead, my high availability is no good because this problem is replicated across my SANS, I need to roll back to a backup. So this is just a demo, thank God, so this server's actually going to shut itself down. Thankfully for me, that's still okay, but I want to roll back to that backup we just did. So that server's just powered off. So on any machine on the network, I can jump into another Shadow Protect console and launch the Virtual Boot Wizard. Now, what I need to do is go and browse for that backup we just did. So I've got a pre-saved destination here, which contains all of my backups. And this incremental here, 1,579, is the backup we just did. So I'm going to select that put in my encrypted password. It's going to automatically pull across all volumes from that backup we've just done. Uh, in this case, I've just got the recovery petition in the C drive. I don't need to keep that recovery petition. I just need my system and data volumes that are associated with that machine. So I click Next. Uh, now I could recover this straight back into Hyper-V. Perhaps to make this demo a little bit more interesting, let's go and recover it into vSphere. So it's actually going to perform a DR and a migration at the same time. So I'm going to put in my vSphere credentials uh, and log into vSphere. So what you'll see here is how Shadow Protect handles hardware independent recovery. So it's pulled across the SMB path. It's going to hand this over to VMware to um, have VMware directly boot this back up. I'm going to select an ESXi host. Uh, the first time you do this, it'll inject a plugin and then we don't need to go through that again. I'm going to select a data store going to give the machine a name, so we'll call this SPX01. 
two core, two gig of memory, automatically start the virtual machine and click create. So one of the options that was there was the ability to migrate the data drive. So by migrating the data drive, it will restore my whole VM into the VMDK in the data store before turning it on. So if that was a two terabyte VM, that would take some time. If it was four terabytes, it would take even longer. So what I've said is don't, don't wait to do that restore. I want you to just boot directly off the backup, get me up and running. My server's gone down, my users are offline. I need to get that server back up. So VMware will directly boot the backup image while it's running at any stage we can kick off a transparent backfill to restore the rest of that data out of the backup image into the VMDK. So right now what this wizard's doing is a HIR patch, a hardware independent restore. That's saying look, this server that we just backed up, yes it was a Hyper-V VM, it could have been a physical server, it could have been running in Citrix Zen or KVM, uh, we support a whole raft of different hypervisor environments, but I need to give Windows the appropriate drivers so that it can now go and boot into VMware and not run into any further issue. So it's now going through the process of configuring the virtual machine. So again, this is just handing over the final settings into vSphere. Once this is completed, this SPX console doesn't do anything further. vSphere takes over and performs the entire virtualization directly from the backup image and can handle the full migration or transparent backfill. So what we'll do is once that's finished, we'll jump into the um, vSphere web browser and we'll go and take a look at this machine. So we can see there the virtual boot has succeeded. So again, as I mentioned, uh, this console now doesn't need to be running anymore. So let's go jump back into the web page. vSphere web client, here's this SPX01 VM. So I'll select that. Let's take a quick look here. So if I right click on this, and go open console. I can actually see in that little preview there. It's just on that boot process. So it is expected that the initial boot time might be a little bit slow. Obviously it's running off a compressed image chain. The cool thing is that as this is booting, anything it's reading is getting written into the VMDK in the data store. So over time, um, before I initiate the backfill, the, the performance of this VM does improve because it's read only from the backup image, it writes to the data store. Now, this is a fantastic solution because not only could you use this for migrations or disaster recovery, you can use this for sample testing. So my Hyper-V VM could still be running, it could still be backing up because virtual boot is read only from the backup image. So I could virtualize this into a sandpit network, I could bring up my DC and other machines into that network and I could perform software upgrades, I could make tests, um, you know, do various scenarios without any impact to production. So this has got a lot of use cases, this is a fantastic solution um, with a couple of clicks as you've just seen, within minutes I've done a backup and a full recovery and a migration at the same time. So it's just still going through its boot process here um, and within another sort of minute or so, this machine will log in and we'll see those files we just created on the desktop. What's really cool is at the same time as doing this backup and restore, the backup has automatically replicated into the StorageCraft cloud. So once this is logged in, I'm gonna take you into our StorageCraft cloud service and recover the VM there as well, which is in our data store in NextDC in Northride in Sydney. So I'm showing you on-prem disaster recovery. I'm gonna show you off-prem disaster recovery. This is a live demo. We're working off that file I just created a few minutes ago on the desktop. I'm gonna show you that in this VMware environment. We're then gonna boot it up in the StorageCraft cloud and take a look at it there as well. So very easy set and forget technology, the ability to roll back to any 15 minute point in time within the day and recover within minutes. This is a fantastic way for backup and disaster recovery that you can really rely on and know that you can recover anywhere at any time. Because of this hardware independent restore, it means we can go across different environments, we could go back to virtual, so back to physical, P to V, V to V, um, V to P, very easy to go between environments and recover. So it looks like we're just kind of getting through that startup phase now, um, and within another, hopefully a few seconds, we'll have that desktop. Now in this demo, I've configured it just to automatically log in. That just saves me having to uh, control up, delete, and log in here. But what we will see is that 8,500 files worth of data in the folder on the desktop, and that file with the, um, the backup time. So I can see there, uh, 2.31 p.m., that file, and just down here now, it's 2.39 p.m. So in just 
seven minutes, we have done a full backup and recovery into a different environment. It's completely booted. It's ready to go. So very easy solution for backup and disaster recovery. Now, as I mentioned, that backup is also been replicated automatically into the storage craft cloud. So if I jump across up the top here into the storage craft cloud services, I've already selected the machine here um, prior to starting this demonstration, and I can see here last image received, C drive incremental number 1579. That was the backup we just did. So what we need to do is click generate recovery point. That's going to immediately convert that backup into an available point to virtualize. So this automatically happens once a day, but at any point in time, we can immediately generate the most recent recovery point into an available uh, image to recover from. So I'm just doing a quick refresh here. We should then see the manually requested backup from 2.31 p.m. Uh, incremental 1579. So I'm gonna go ahead here and click launch VM. It's automatically going to select that most recent backup we've just done. I need to put in my encrypted password. Now, as this is a test, I'm going to ask it to auto-destroy after one day, just so that it removes it from the cloud. Uh, if it was a real failover, I would select that button, and that will instruct our cloud to start taking uh, regular backups of that machine. So what's happening here is we can see that it's creating the network. So the first machine you virtualize in your account in our cloud, it will initiate a full network. It will then perform um, a hardware independent restore and start virtualizing that server. So just while it's starting up the network in the server, if I just jump across into the account here and click on networking, you can see here the comprehensive networking capabilities we have. You can choose the subnet you wanna run in our cloud. You can configure IPsec or OpenVPN for individual users. You can request public IP addresses. You can define all your private IP and DHCP reservations in our cloud and perform uh, network mappings for any port forwards that you need into the cloud. So this is very comprehensive. You can also request uh, our advanced networking feature, which can expose the entire firewall and give you extended capabilities across any type of networking requirement you have in our cloud. One of the other really cool things is the virtual machine policy. This is actually an exclusive patent with StorageCraft. This is an idea we've come up with to predefine your entire site failover. So based on pre-configuring the networking, we can drag machines from the left over into the policy on the right, and you can see there I've got my DC01, my domain controller set to boot straight away after zero seconds. Once that's running, my other server's gonna wait four minutes, then start up. So we can get quite complex with these policies, but the idea is it gives me a single click failover. I click launch VM policy, it will start booting my network and then my servers in the appropriate order for a complete site failover. So extremely easy, all-inclusive end-to-end disaster recovery. Now, if I jump back to this virtual machine, it's just in those final stages of virtualizing now. The networking's up and running. Within another couple of minutes, um, we'll be watching the server go through its final stages of boot. So what's really cool is that this cloud here, in fact, I can see here now I can view. So what's really cool is that this is going to send that VM into Windows Boot Manager here for 30 seconds. It's got 17 left, so I'm just going to hit Enter to continue now. That gives me the ability to jump into safe mode or into Active Directory Restore mode if I needed to, but I just want to get the server up and running. So we're now watching it go through its normal boot process in the cloud. Now what's really cool is that We've got full console access here to watch the server boot up in the cloud. And what this means is that if there was some problem or the server's in a really bad way, you know, we could boot from the Shadow Protect recovery environment and perform a repair, or as I mentioned, get into safe mode. But it's giving us as admins full control of this complete DR failover. You don't get this type of capability in the public clouds, and that's why StorageCraft have invested in a dedicated disaster recovery data center. Now, while this is booting, um, obviously in the policy it would be booting through my other servers, but just while this is going through this boot up stage, let's just jump back into the machine and I'll explain to you what you can do from here. So we're running in the cloud, my users have logged on through whichever, you know, if the remote desktop servers have gone in through RD Gateway or VPNs or, um, you know, whatever type of port forwarding for applications they need is, is all pre-configured. People are working, I now need to get this VM back on-prem. So what we can do, is click on the BMR button here, 
request BMR drive. I've got the ability for StorageCraft to put this back up onto disk and ship it back to me, or I can simply download the backups rather than requesting a C drive. So what happens is I can download or request the C drive. This allows me to pre-stage the backups onto a new server or an existing environment back on-prem. As it's pre-staging, it will continually sync with the running VM in the cloud. So you'll see here I have the option to convert that to a real failover. That will instruct our cloud to take an hourly backup of that running VM and allow you to automatically sync that back on-prem. And what that means is I wait till lunchtime, I wait till five o'clock, I say users, we're gonna cut back over from in the cloud back on-prem, can everyone please log off? I click on finalize uh, on our restore environment on-prem, it will tell the machine in the cloud to shut down, it'll take a final snapshot, it's the last hour left that has to sync back on-prem, and within minutes we've cut over back on site. So this is a truly an end-to-end -end disaster recovery solution uh, based in the cloud. So we can see here, it's just in that final process, uh, this is uh, Windows Server 2012 R2, so I think it's going through a bit of a uh, device stage uh, during boot. Um, but within another minute or so, this server again, that same server that we backed up in Hyper-V and recovered into VMware, will be up and running in the StorageCraft Cloud Data Center. So very easy. Uh, this price point starts at 88 AU dollars, Australian dollars a month. 88 dollars a month, up to a terabyte. We're gonna keep the last three days of recovery points uh, on that plan, and it's all inclusive. The CPU, the memory, all of the virtualization, including getting it back on site, is all included. So it's very affordable, very easy, no upfront investment, no month-by-month -month commitment, very easy to consume. So that backup again, we did it at 2.31 p.m., it's now 2.46. So what are we talking, 15 minutes of gone, I've migrated from Hyper-V into VMware, the same time I've recovered in the StorageCraft cloud. So guys, quick demo today. Thanks for watching. Hope this has been a little bit informative to see the power and what you can do with the Shadow Protect solution. Thank you.